Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. Most high in Christ, bless. We're going to get started in about in one more minute, y'all. Just trying to jot a few things down. We're going to send up the prayers. Seattle. Hey, Shalom. Most high in Christ bless. Um, we're going to go ahead and set up the prayers. Sisters, cover your heads. Brothers, uncover your heads. Let's rise and face Jerusalem. Father God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, dear Lord, we come to thee, thy servants humbly asking for thy mercy, thy forgiveness of us of our sins and the sins of our forefathers, dear Lord. We pray that you not cast us away, but draw us nigh unto thee, Father. But we know we have committed much transgressions, dear Lord. But we pray for thy mercy, dear Lord. We pray for peace in this captivity. We pray that you guide us and strengthen us, dear Lord, in all our ways. Direct our paths, dear Lord, that we may walk unto thee. Father God, we pray that you protect our families our brothers and sisters far and near, our leaders, Father God, for they are in uh, Dominican Republic right now, dear Lord, doing thy will. I pray you protect them, strengthen them, guide them, and keep them, and allow them a safe return, Father God. Send your angels encamped around them, Father. Dear Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for another day, dear Lord. We may glorify thee. We pray, dear Lord, you continue to watch us, dear Lord. Watch over us, strengthen our faith, dear Lord. Let us uh, continue to be uh, uh, profitable servants unto thee, Father. Strengthen us that we may be profitable servants, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we glorify thee in thy uh, son Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ, bless. Most high in Christ, bless. I am Captain Shemaya. With me I have Officer Yuri. 12. Officer I got 12 and Officer Asa with me. 
All praise. Um, it's brother, you know, flying, flying high, city to city, coast to coasting. <laughs> I mean, hey, so we local, man. We local. You know, we local Jews, man. Um, I pray all you brothers and sisters are well. Pray most highs, blessing your houses. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you all. Um, let me see. How should I put this? Uh, the other day, uh, what was it? What was that class called? Do you expect something from you? What is it? You expect the devil to change, right? Um, but there was, you know, it's mainly it was mainly about Esau, and we went into the history of uh, Esau separating families as they're doing now. Okay, they're separating, uh, you know, uh, children from mothers. I'm talking about nursing children from mothers from fathers at the borders and have them locked in cages. But we went over and we proved that's uh, that's been Esau's dealings since forever. That's how Esau gets down. Um, so with that, yesterday I saw a video in the UK where a uh, Arabic or Muslim street teacher was preaching. And he, uh, he, he, he uh, was stressing to his Arab brothers to stop acting black. Okay? Stop acting black is what he said. And then he later on did a video. I posted it on my Facebook page because I thought it was kind of interesting because sometimes we forget about Ishmael. Sometimes we're so fixated on Esau that we forget about the atrocities Ish Ishmael has done and still does to this very day because the uh, Arab slave trade is still going on. It's still good. Bishop did a, 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 a few classes in recent months about that in Libya, so on and so forth. So always remember, let's actually let's open up with uh, Nehemiah chapter five, verse nine. Here's what I want you to understand. Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter five, verse nine. Nehemiah chapter five, verse nine. Also, I said, it is not good that ye do. Ought ye not walk in the fear of God, mm -hmm. in the fear of our God, mm -hmm. because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? The heathen are what? Our enemies? The scripture says that the heathens are our enemies enemies that's what god says so what we tend to think is as soon as we hear that we our minds automatically revert to esau but the thing is it's not limited to esau we limit it to esau because that's who we see today that's who we um immediately identify slavery with oppression with so on and so forth okay and that's not the case the scripture says the heathen, meaning another word for nations, all the nations are enemies against the children of Israel and, and uh, their one true God. OK, so read that one more time. I want to look for something. Nehemiah chapter five, verse nine. Also, I said, it is not good that ye do. Are ye not to walk in the fear of our God? Because of the reproach of the heathen, mm -hmm. our enemies, the heathen, our enemies, our enemies. So now, on, bear me one second, y'all. I'm trying to get a couple things together here. Um, Books falling apart. <laughs> I'll find it. I'm not worried about it. Now go to Psalms 83. I think I'm missing a few pages out of here. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 83 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Keep not thou silence, O God. Mm -hmm. Hold not thy peace. Mm -hmm. And be not still, O God. Mm -hmm. For lo, thine enemies 
make a tumult. So the enemies of God make a loud, angry gathering. It's going to really, it's going to go into what that gathering is about. Go ahead. And they that hate thee. It's about the hatred that they have for the one true God. They've gathered together to show their hatred for the one true God. Go ahead. Have lifted up the head. Uh -huh. They have taken crafty counsel uh -huh. against thy people mm -hmm. and consulted against thy hidden ones. So they've taken crafty counsel against the people of God and done what? And consulted against thy hidden ones. Uh -huh. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. It says, come, let them, let us cut them off from being a nation. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, a game plan. Okay for against the people of God, okay? The scriptures tell us that the heathen are enemies. So one of the reasons that there are enemies is because of what we're reading right now. They have conspired, they have uh, executed plots against God's people. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So, the, so that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So now, is there's a land called Israel. So is it talking about that? No, it's not talking about that. It's talking about there's a people of God that the enemies of God have conspired against and have said, you know what? The name of Israel will not be attached to the people of God anymore. It's the people of God he's talking about. Go back up. What was it? One, one, read one, verse, verse three. Uh -huh. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Against thy people. So crafty counsel was taken against God's people. Okay, go ahead. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Mm -hmm. So now, and consulted against thy hidden ones. Meaning, <clears throat> there's a people that have been hidden. Meaning, and you have to you have to really think. Have they been hidden as far as physically? The people that were once known as the people of God are now considered hidden, meaning unrecognizable, unable to see, unable to notice who those people are. Go ahead. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So now, in order for them to be hidden, there has to be a process. The process is cutting them off from being a nation. That's a process. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Well, we know it's not talking about the land of Israel, because that's still there. Go ahead. For they, for they have consulted together with one consent. So there's one thing that the enemies of God all agree on. They all have one consent about one thing. And we read it in the verse above. That one thing is cutting off the people of God, Right? making them hidden, so on and so forth. That's what they all agree on. They have one consent. Go ahead. They are confederate against thee. So it says they are confederates against thee. They're at war against the Lord. Go ahead. The tabernacles of Edom. Which we went over on Monday. Go ahead. And the Ishmaelites. Why are they number two? Why are they number two? So some of us may say, who are the Ishmaelites? Okay. So we'll go to Zondervan's Bible Dictionary. We're listen, we're going to go into a couple books today, so just bear with me, all right? The Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary, and we're going to read that highlight right there, just that pink one. Ishmaelite. So we're talk. it says, read that again. The Tabernacles of Edom. The tabernacles of Edom. That's why Esau was named first. But go ahead. And the Ishmaelites. And Ishmael was named next. Hmm. So we're showing you, there's, and, and, and don't get me wrong, it's no particular order here. Like it's not noted in the scriptures of, of a particular order. But you have to ask yourself, why is the so-called white man first and the so-called this person next. Go ahead. The word is apparently used in the OT, in Old Testament, in a wider sense. In a wide sense. Go ahead. Referring to the nomadic tribes of northern Arabia. So now, Ishmaelites are re referring to the nomadic tribes of northern Arabia. Go ahead. Generally, Genesis 37 28. Mm -hmm. 36, Judges 8, 24. 
all Arabs following Muhammad's example claim descent from Ishmael. So who are the Ishmaelites? All Arabs. The Arabs in from north from Arabia are the Ishmaelites. So those people, the Bible says, are enemies of God. They're enemies of God and they're enemies of God's people. I don't think it can get any clearer than that, can it? I don't think so. Maybe it can. I don't know. I'm just, what do I know? Read it again. Ishmaelite. All Arabs following Muhammad's example mm -hmm. claim descent from Ishmael. Claim descent from Ishmael. So now, as I mentioned, that video yesterday, I'm like, this dude has some nerve. He says, stop acting black. Stop uh, talking like them. Stop dressing like them, so on and so forth. Well, my petition to all of you brothers and sisters is stop acting Arabian. Right. Stop acting like the Arabs. That's what I, that's what I say to you. Okay. And I'm not going to do a video recanting that because you're not Arabs. But let's let the scriptures, of course, first prove it. And we'll, we'll, we'll go into the history as well. Okay. You could drop that. So let's go to Genesis chapter 17 <clears throat> and verse 19. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 19. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. So the Lord is talking to Abraham and he tells Abraham that his wife, Sarah, is going to have a son. Go ahead. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And what, what is the Lord going to call his name? Thou shalt call his name Isaac. Isaac. So the Lord is calling, said, call his name Isaac. The Lord named Abraham's son. Go ahead. And I will establish my covenant with him mm. for an everlasting covenant mm -hmm. and with his seed after him. Now, the Lord said, told Abraham, listen, you're going to have a son. You're going to name him Isaac. And with him, I'm going to establish a everlasting covenant, meaning a covenant forever. Right. Go ahead. And as for Ishmael, as for who Ishmael. Now, here's the thing. The Lord discussed what he was going to do for Isaac, which was not the firstborn. He discussed what he was going to do with Isaac first, because that covenant he was going to make with I, with Abraham, Isaac and his descendants was way more important than 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 Abraham's actual firstborn. Go ahead. I have heard thee. Behold. I have blessed him mm -hmm. and I will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Mm -hmm. Twelve princes shall he beget mm -hmm. and I will make him a great nation. So now we read what the Lord is going to do for Isaac. And now we just read what the Lord is going to do for Ishmael. There's something that differs between what the Lord is going to do for those two sons. So we're going to go up to verse 19 again and read it again. Verse 19, mm -hmm. and God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him mm -hmm. for an everlasting covenant. Those are the two words I want you to home in on. Everlasting covenant. And he's talking about Isaac. Now, go ahead. And with his seed after him. Mm -hmm. And as for Ishmael. with his seed after him. Everybody that was going to come out of the loins of Isaac. Go ahead. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, mm -hmm. and I will make him a great nation. So now the Lord told Ishmael, listen, you're going to have princes come out of your loins. You're going to become a great nation, so on and so forth. All this is going to happen to you. But he never mentioned about any covenant with Ishmael. Now, this is... Abraham's son this is Abraham's firstborn. So here's the thing. The blessings usually go to the firstborn, but the Lord never established it with that firstborn. Let's go to Psalms 105. Let me have verse nine. Psalms chapter one. Start at verse six. Psalms chapter 105, verse 6. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Mm. 
He is the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. His judgments are in all the earth. Mm -hmm. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, mm -hmm. which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Ishmael is in there. And confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law mm -hmm. and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. So that covenant, that agreement, that testament, went from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob and then to Israel, the line of Jacob. But he never said that about with Ishmael. Hmm. So now you see why these other nations have determined that they're the enemies of God. Why is that? Because God never chose them. This is why, this is why everybody's so mad. This is why they're super mad. <clears throat> They're mad because they know that there's only one God. Listen, all these nations know there's only one God. The issue that they have is that God only chose one people. That's the problem. That's, that's, the, that's the issue. That's the hiccup. They can't fathom that. You know how, you know how, you know, they say that in the sus in the street. How can God make everybody and only pick one? Let me have 2nd Ezra 6. Because God can do that. So you tell me he can make all types of birds, all types of all types of trees, all types of mammals, all types of animals in the ocean. And he, he can't shoot. Actually, we're gonna, that's in 2nd Ezra 2. And is it chapter 9? Or chapter chapter 5, actually. Um, give me one second. It's uh yeah. Chapter five. We'll get there after six. Six and fifty-four. Second Ezra chapter six and verse fifty-four. Come on. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, mm -hmm. of him come we all. So from Adam, we all come from that. We all come from Adam. Right? Go ahead. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. There it is. There it is. The people who God has chosen. Now, we just read that in Psalms 105, right? Go ahead. Verse 55. Mm -hmm. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Now, another one of the reasons that these other nations are upset is because they know that the Lord made everything for the sake of the children of Israel. Because everything that was created was for our pleasure. It was not necessarily for sin, but it was for our delight. We were supposed to delight at the multitude of all he created. We were supposed to delight at his Sabbath days, delight at his feast days. All that he created, he did it for the children of Israel. Go ahead. Verse 56. As for the other people. As for who? For the other people. The people who are not the children of Israel, who are not chosen. Go ahead. Which also come of Adam. Mm -hmm. Thou hast said that they are nothing. They're nothing. They're nothing. So now, it kind of makes sense why these other nations are so upset with us. Let me tell you something. They're upset for one. For one of the many reasons they're upset is God didn't choose them. And look how we have squandered what God has given us. That's something crazy. The other nations are looking back and saying, you Negroes, you Hispanics, you actually, the Lord actually made the world for you. And look what you've done with it. Look what you've done with it. They actually look at us with disgust. Give me that in Psalms 44. We're going to come back here. Psalms 44 and 14. Let's see if I made that up. Psalm chapter 44, verse 14. Thou makest us a byword among the heathen. Uh -huh. A shaking of the head. A what? A shaking of the head. So when they look at us with disgust, they say, look, look, look how you squandered what the one true God. Look, he's they're like, I have a damn uh what do you call that? What, what do you call that? That fat Chinese dude statue? Buddha. 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 I got a fat Chinese dude I'm worshiping. And you have the one true God. And look what you did. I hate you. That's what they do. That's what they do. And they run off like red and Friday. <laughs> you know you're going to cry in the car, right? That's what you got to tell these nations. <laughs> 
when they hate on you, like I know you're gonna cry in the car. Because they they want to be you. They want to be you bad. Go ahead. A shaking of the head among the people. So this is among the people. When the people see us, they actually, in their spirit, they're like, surely this can't be the people of God. I went over that on, on, on Monday. Surely this can't be the people of God. This can't be the beauty of Jerusalem. Look at them. Surely this is not them. It totally, totally uh, forgetting that their forefathers work diligently to put us in this position to make sure that we didn't have uh, the flourishing communities they have because why we've been in slavery longer than, than we've been in slavery forever so they work hard to make sure that we have been destroyed as a people then today they sit back and say mm, mm, mm. look at them look at them hmm. let's go back to second interest Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 56. Mm -hmm. As for the other people which also come of Adam, mm -hmm. thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle. But be what? But be like unto spittle. But be like unto spittle, which is spit. You can read that in John, uh, I think it's 9 and 6. Go ahead. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. He says he has compared them. To when you have a vessel of water and a drop falls out. It's of no significance. No one is going to mourn or cry over them. No one is going to do that. Certainly not God. God says they're insignificant. Go ahead. And now, O oh Lord, behold, these heathen. These who? These heathen. Now, remember, the heathens are our enemies. Go ahead. Which have ever been reputed as nothing. Which have always had the reputation of being nothing. Their reputation has never been anything other than that because we went over it on Monday despite them being in governmental positions, despite them being wealthy, so on and so forth. The scripture says they're the basest of men. So their reputation, even in their high esteem, is still nothing. Read that part again. Which have ever been reputed as nothing. They've always been reputed as nothing. Because you won't read anywhere in the scriptures where God says, you know what? Uh, the children of Israel are no longer my chosen, but the other nations are my chosen. You're not going to read that. So even though we are brought to a lower state, we're still the chosen of God. He's allowing us time in this captivity to get ourselves right. You'll never see where he's going to choose the, the, the Hamites, the Canaanites. He didn't choose them. for He choose, chose them for destruction. He chose them for slavery. That's about it. Go ahead. Have begun to be lords over us. So now that's showing you who these heathens are. The heathen that the Lord regards as nothing, has the reputation of nothing. The heathen that God says are our enemies, are the ones who rule over us. So if we're at the bottom, every other nation that's above us, no matter what level they're on, God says, what? That which have been, ever been reputed as nothing. They're reputed as nothing. Have begun to be lords over us. Now they're lords over us. Now they're lords over us. Any other nation can open up a, a business in any neighborhood. Us, so much pushback. We, we, we want schools to teach our people so much pushback. Why is that? Why? Because they're lords over us. You know it's bad when you go to go rent a property and Moab is the owner and Moab treats you like a nigger. <laughs> You're like, am I really, have we been brought down that low? That little Moab? That Jet Li gonna have an attitude? Mm -hmm. That that, that Jackie Chan gonna uh, 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 act up on me right now? Am, am I really, listen, that's how pissed the Lord is with us. The Lord said, listen, you uh, 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 have forsaken my word. Therefore, the people who you have, who you see as being less than you, are going to be lords over you. That's what God said. Go ahead. And to devour us. And to what? And to devour and us. And to destroy us, to make a prey of us, to make a merchandise of us. That's what the Lord said is going to happen with these other nations. That's what God said. Um, real quick, 
real quick. See which one I want to start with. <sighs> Bear with me one second, y'all. Bear with me one second. There's a part where it says, um, it says, um, I forgot to write that. I just thought about it. That's why. Yes. So. This book is called Islam's Black Slaves. Islam's Black Slaves. Okay. And and look, and I and I did a class some it might have been a year ago on the trans-sub-Saharan slave trade, where you know it was more extensive. Today I'm giving you the, the very, very shortened version. The, mu- the very shortened version, okay? The very shortened version. So again, Islam's black slaves, all right? I'm on, uh, this is by uh, Ronald uh, Segal. This is page 49. It says, even it Ibn Khaldun, Khaldun, Dun, whatever, the permanent medieval historian and social and social thinker in Islam slid easily from prevailing theories on climatic on climatic impact to those ethnicities to eth, excuse me, to, to those of ethnic inferiority. Elaborating on the association between exposure to heat of the sun and the generic merriment of blacks. So he says, listen, blacks can survive more in the hot sun. You know, you know, it's desert land over there. In the hot sun, blacks do well. And they're merry at being slaves. It says the merriment. So this is the, and if you, and, and, and if you remember, these are things that Edomite so-called early early age critical thinkers also thought remember they used to measure the cranium of negroes saying we were inferior they would um perform uh, medical uh, uh experiments on women the first gynecologist he was a savage he was he he mutilated so many sisters in slavery so on and so forth and these are the things where they come to find their um their 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 medical breakthroughs was on us so this man, this same same frame of thought, and now we're talking about the Arabs or Ishmael. So when that so when that uh, street preacher said it and they filmed it, he said, "Listen, stop, stop acting black." He's pleading with his people to stop acting black, right? Because there's a mindset in Islam or with Arabs that we're going to read about right now. Okay, the mindset is is that blacks are inferior. So he's he's pleading with them. Stop acting black. Stop acting like those who are inferior to you, those who you had in slavery for centuries. Now, I want to say this. The trans-sub-Saharan slave trade has been going on way longer than the transatlantic slave trade. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if y'all know that. Beginning officially in the 8th century on a large scale, but it was early as in the sixth century where Arabs were going into initially West coast of Africa, getting slaves back and forth from there to Mecca. Mecca was one of the largest slave ports, one of the largest, but now you have our people making a hodge over to Mecca because a false prophet told you to go and do that, to walk around the Kaaba stone, which is literally a stone encased in that marble casing. They reach in their heads, they kiss it, they bow down and pray to that thing. You are in the midst of idolatry. You're in the midst of idolatry, period. And this, hopefully, with all, listen, with all the videos that IUIC has about Islam, I pray you brothers and sisters come out of that thing, because here's the thing. 
you may think, okay, let's say, for instance, you're not in the midst of idolatry. If your mindset is uh, everybody can worship whatever they want to worship, it's freedom of worship or freedom of religion or whatever the case may be. Listen, if you're okay with wickedness, then you may reap the judgment for wickedness. Be very mindful. So it says, I'll read that line again. It says, elaborating on the association between exposure to the heat of the sun and the generic merriment of blacks. He likened the effect to that of alcohol on the drinker and of warm air in the bath, which induced the bather to sing. So they said, when we put blacks in slavery, it's a joy to them. Like when a drinker has a drink or when you take a warm bath and the warm air is upon you. Huh? This is how those that rule over you think. Just like today, when, uh, when, for instance, let's say a behind, uh, a, a, a brother gets his behind whooped by the Edomite police officers, right? Someone will comment on that thing and say, well, it's not as bad as slavery. <clears throat> Like how do you, how do you, or 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 when they or they say slavery is a choice, <laughs> and wicked Jake saying that too, slavery is a choice. So you're telling me, I, and 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 it, and it's and it's always the unstudied, unrepented of our people that say s silly things like that. So what you're telling me is being castrated. Watching your daughter, your son, your wife be raped, foot, feet getting chopped off, getting the Derby's dose. The Derby's dose is when a slave would escape. Uh, William Thistlewood in the Caribbean, he really began this. I think it was in, it was in Jamaica, actually. They would, when they caught the slave, they would bring him back. They would tie him down or put him in a hot box first. Hot box was a, a hole in the ground covered by bars and you literally just, and you couldn't move. You couldn't turn over. You just stayed in one position. So when that midday summer sun would be sitting over you, you would literally bake. You would bake in the sun. They would take you out of the hot box, have other slaves hold you down, and they would have one slave defecate in your mouth. When they, when you def, when they defecate in your mouth, they would cover your mouth, tie it up, so you, it only had one way to go. It's called the Derby's Dose. Look it up. Don't believe me. But that was a choice, though. That was the choice. Oh, yeah, you got to pick which slave was going to dump in your mouth. Yeah, don't give me Big Tyrone. He had he had some cheese the other day. Oh, don't, don't give me, no, 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 not him. He had some White Castle. No, 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 no. You had no choice. So some of you say, some of you actually consent to that. Oh, yeah, slavery was a choice for, for 400 years or 200 years, whatever you want to call it. You say it was a choice. Okay. So here, the Arabians are saying the same exact thing. This says, listen, when they're enslaved, they're happy. They sing. He went on to claim that the Negro nations, read that again. He went on to claim that the Negro nations are, as a rule, submissive to slavery. Yes, Kerry Washington was in a hot box in Django. Yes, you're right. Thank you for reminding me. She was in a hot box. So I'll read that again. It says he went on to claim that the Negro, and this is this is a, 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 a Islamic scholar. How this is like how they um hold Socrates at <clears throat> at a high esteem and, and and Plato and Herodotus and scholars, right? He says he went on to claim that the Negro nations are as a rule submissive to slavery because they have attributes that are quite similar to those of dumb animals. Mm. Hold on. I'm confused. So you're telling me that I should worship the God of those who think we're dumb animals?
Um, hold on, real quick. Uh, Let me jump down a little bit. It says, by, by the Middle Ages, the Arabic word abd was in general used to denote a black slave. So they had names for us. They had, remember, we just read in Psalms 44 that would be called by words, meaning another name outside of the children of Israel. So in Arabic, they have the word abd, which means black slave. So yeah, the Arabs called us names too. Oh, you thought it was just Esau calling you a nigga. Okay, okay. We're going to come back to this book real quick. Let's go back to that second Ezra chapter five. Um, no, it's not five. Is it nine? Six. No, 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 where he, um, no, chapter, yeah, chapter five, I was in the wrong chapter, chapter five and verse um, 23. Second Ezra, chapter five, verse 23, mm -hmm. and said, O Lord that bearest rule of every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee own. Thou hast chosen thee one only vine. So now, the Lord said, the scripture says, after all the trees, so on and so forth, the Lord chose one only vine. Go ahead. And of all lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit. Israel, go ahead. And of all the flowers thereof, one lily. One lily. And of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled thee one river. Jordan, go ahead. And of all builded cities, Thou hast hallowed Zion unto thyself, which is Jerusalem, Zion, same thing. And of all the fowls that are created, thou hast named thee one dove. So now, out of, so what, what we're showing you is people get so restless when we tell uh, our people that they're the chosen people of God. But what we're reading is God has chosen his favorite everything. He's chosen his favorite everything. Go ahead. And of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep. Mm -hmm. And among all the multitudes of peoples, thou hast gotten thee one people. Dang. Now it makes sense why they said the Apocrypha has got to go. <laughs> they said, nah, 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 that thing make it too plain. We got to take that out of there. The Protestants read that thing. They said, no, no, no. It's not inspired by God. No, 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 no. <laughs> I know why you mad. It's all right. See, it's a joy unto us. This gospel is a joyous thing to hear, man. It's supposed to boost your spirit. Now, the, 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 the Islamic scholar says enslavement makes us merry. Nah, hearing this, that we're the chosen of God out of everybody on the planet, that's what makes us merry. That's right. I think it's a joy unto our spirit, man. Go ahead. And unto this people whom thou lovest, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So it, it, it clearly tells you who the people are that the Lord chose. He said, those people that you chose, you actually gave them a law, a perfect law. Psalms 19 and 7. Um, no, finish that out, matter of fact. Verse 28. Uh -huh. And now, O Lord, why hast thou given this one people over unto many? Because it's not just Esau. It's not just Ishmael. It's not just Moab. You see that thing? It says, why have you given us over to many? Because we've been in many captivities. We've been in many. Uh, 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 we, we know we usually discuss the major captivities. We've also been in many minor captivities, like under the Philistines, so on and so forth. We've been in other. We've been in, we've been in slavery more than we've been so-called free. Because that only that time of freedom was only 80 years. That's it. 40 under King Solomon, 40 under King David. And King Solomon was the only time where it was at peace. David had to be at war all the time. But we were still in rulership because they paid King David tribute. They paid Solomon tribute. 
So, so, so the other nations are paying taxes to us. You see that thing? But now we have to pay them. So read that again. Second Edges chapter 5, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And now, O Lord, why hast thou given this one people mm -hmm. over unto many? Why have you given this one people over to many? Go ahead. And upon the one root hast thou prepared others. And, and upon the one root hast thou prepared others. So on the same foundation that you is is actually for the people, why are others claiming that same inheritance? It's not for them, but they're just attached to the root like a daggone cancer. Go ahead. And why hast thou scattered thy own one thy only one people among many? Among many, because it's not we're not only just scattered among Esau. In India, you have the CD people, you have the Afro Arabs. We were over in uh, Israel, you have the Afro Palestinians. We're, we were scattered, we're scattered everywhere. We're scattered everywhere. Go ahead. Verse 29. And they which did gainsay mm -hmm. thy promises mm -hmm. and believe not thy covenants mm -hmm. have trodden them down. So now, those that did not uh, believe the Lord's covenants, that it was only with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jacob's descendants. He says, you know what? Because we're not chosen, because we're not the people of God, we're going to trot them down. We're going to go in. We're going to enslave them. We're going to give them a false God. Damn. Because they know. Matter of fact, let's get that in Judah 5. Here's something that the other nations know. I think it's verse 20. Yes, sir. Um, hold on one second. Go to verse. Go start, start at verse 17. Judah, chapter 5, verse 17. Go to verse 11 real quick. Verse 11. Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them. Dealt subtly with them. So this is what it refers to in Exodus chapter uh, 1. Which says, let us deal wisely with them, right? Go ahead. And brought them low with laboring in Britain mm -hmm. and made them slaves. And we were made slaves. We will and 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 now hold on. Is it in here? During that time, it was the real Africans, right? Give me one second, y'all. Later on, in the in I, I've used this book quite a few times, the Columbia History of the World. This is done by Columbia University. The Columbia History of the World, right? On page 254, in 639 AD to 642, the Arabs conquered Egypt. So those people that you see in Egypt today, they are not the real Egyptians, the Arabian conquests all throughout the, the, the sixth, seventh, eighth century, so on and so forth. The Arabs spread by conquering lands. That's how Islam actually spread. It was spread by the sword, just like Christianity. No different. The Arabs killed many people. It was because they were referred to as infidels. So when you don't believe in Allah, the judgment is they're supposed to kill you. So in 639, the Arabs actually conquered Egypt. So they ran, this, and this is the prophecy where the Lord told um, told uh, the real inhabitants of Egypt, you won't rise up to be a nation anymore. You're going to be the basis in Ezekiel. You're going to be the basis because the last of them were pushed out in the 600s. Okay. But so the people that were, uh, enslaving uh, so-called blacks in that early part of this of, of of this millennium were the Arabs. So during the time of the Exodus, it was the real Egyptians. Later on, it was the Arabs enslaving us in Egypt. Hope y'all understand. And the, all those Arabian countries. Where had you holding it? Go Judah five. Judah five. Jump down to verse seventeen. Then. Judah chapter five, verse seventeen. Come on. And whilst they sinned not before their God, they prospered, because the God that hated iniquity was with them. So now it says, 
the God that hates iniquity was with them. Go ahead. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them. So this is when you depart from the way that he appointed them, meaning the laws of God. Go ahead. They were destroyed in many battles. Hold on a second. Hold on. Um, if, 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 some, if it's somebody that's on uh, class right now that's calling the school. No, that's, that's Patient Saints Radio. That's on Sundays. It's one of you, 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 you stop calling. Because it's, it's been a couple times, right? Like every time we hear Delhi, bro, I'm not answering the phone. We have a 1 800 number that, that you can call, not Patient Saints Radio. We'll answer that on Sunday. All right. Thank you. Read that again. Judah chapter 5, verse 18. But when they depart, oh, just visit israelunite.org, front slash contact us. You'll find our, our actual phone number to reach us. Okay. Go ahead, read that again. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, when we when we strayed from the laws of God, they were destroyed in many battles, mm -hmm. very sore, mm -hmm. and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. So now it's telling you, the people who trot us down, the people who rule over us, they all know it's because we departed from the way of the Lord. Go ahead. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground. And the temple of our God was cast down in Jerusalem, right? So here's the thing. When they know this, with excuse me, with them knowing this, one of the ways to keep the children of Israel in sin that God doesn't fight for us is to give us another God. That's one of the easiest ways. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to force it on you. We're going to force this God on you. Um, give me that in Exodus 20 and verse 3. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read that again. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. But we are worshiping another God now, right? That's what they, that's what that's what they tell us. This is the one true God. We're gonna come in. If you don't worship this God, we're gonna kill you. They did this. And listen, when the Jesuit priests came here with with Gad and Reuben, they did the same thing. They did the same exact thing. If you do not worship the white image of Jesus, you're going to die. That's it. Everyone, everyone that rules over us has done that. How do you think we get into all these religions? Listen, let me tell you something. Bec the reason why many of our brothers and sisters don't adhere to the Bible is because one of your slave masters has a stronger hold on you than the one true God. I'm going to say that again. The reason why many of our brothers and sisters don't believe in the word of God is because one of their slave masters has a stronger hold on them than the one true God. Real quick, Romans 1 and 25. Romans chapter 1 and verse 25. Mm -hmm. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Go ahead. And worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Now, many of us have a belief system that the so-called white man taught us. Many of us have belief systems that the so-called Chinese man taught us, the, the Arab man, Japanese man, so on and so forth. And the thing is about when you believe the, the, the creature, which or Esau, more so than God, is because Esau is multi-layered. Esau will have you as an will have you being an atheist. <laughs> Esau will have you be, be believing in sciences. Esau will have you believing in white Jesus, so on and so forth. Okay, so there's multi layers to that thing because ultimately you have a God, it's just not the God of this Bible. So you have you you've been serving the creature more than the creator. And in that, somebody has taken the truth of God's word and says, you know what? That's not what that says. 
It says, I know it says the rainbow was a covenant between the Lord and, and, and the people that he wouldn't destroy them again by water, so on and so forth. But no, nah, let's turn it into the symbol for LGBT. So now when you see that symbol, you forget about the covenant God made. And now you associate it with homosexuality. So, so you have a, a God. It's just not the God of this Bible. You believe what the so-called white man has taught you. So now you're walking around dressed like a kung fu fighter, talking about you believe in Zhang and, and what's that? Um, and yin and yang and yin yang twins and <laughs> and uh, what was that thing when you feng shui? I hear, yo, I hear, I heard a Jew say something about feng shui. Got a feng yo shui out of here? Nah, that ain't. That's not our custom. So you have you have another god because that means that slave master has a stronger hold on you. We're gonna go back to this book real quick. Um, back to Islam's black slaves, page sixty one. I want this, this, and right there. This one. Where, however. Is the evidence in Islam today where, however, is the evidence in Islam today as there is in the Americas of a historical trade in black slaves? So now, so there is evidence that there's a historical trade in black slaves, just like in America. There's also the same in Islam. Go ahead. To so many millions. To, to what? So many millions. There's been millions in trade? Go ahead. One answer is that there are, in fact, considerable numbers of blacks whose origin was overwhelmingly in the Islamic trade. Now, we, we can't go past that. It says there's an overwhelming amount of blacks whose origins are in the Islamic trade. So here's the thing. Let's say you're great, again, because it's still going on in Libya today. It's the slave, listen, the slave trade, the Islamic or Arab slave trade is still going on today. So beginning in the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th century today, how many centuries, how many hundreds of years is that? That's a lot. I can't even count. I went to public school. I can't count. That's, thou, that's like a thousand, that's over a thousand years. Yeah, well, well over a thousand years. Close to 2,000 years, right? It's like it's like between fifteen hundred and two thousand years right now, of slavery with the Arabs. I had to, I had to move my fingers real quick. <laughs> uh, oh, sis said the phone stopped ringing real quick. Yeah, somebody in class. Like, we, come on, we we hey, go to IsraelNight.org. Numbers there. You can call. We answer. We pick up the bat phone. Um, go ahead, read. They are visible enough across North Africa. It says that that's, that is evident enough across North, Af across North Africa because back and forth between Christianity and Islam, it wavers between which is the biggest religion in Africa. It still is. I think it's Islam right now, but it does waver. Christianity is growing, but Islam is all throughout North Africa. Go ahead. And it wasn't done because of, because um, we actually went to Israel. We spoke to people. And they were like, oh yeah, we're you know we're, we're, we're we believe in uh we believe in Allah and all that, especially the Afro Palestinians, not those Jake that moved over there, but the Afro Palestinians, straight Allah Akbar stuff. Go ahead, read that. Across North Africa, from Morocco to Egypt, mm -hmm. in Yemen mm -hmm. and the Gulf states, mm -hmm. and from evidence of a darkening gene in other parts of Islam where such slaves were dispatched. Mm. It says wherever the slaves were dispatched, that area began to get darkened, meaning complexion. You can tell that they weren't Arabs. I mean, when we went to Israel, the Afro-Palestinians, many of them were darker than me, and I'm dark. I was like, damn, that's my brother. Look, listen, if we put those brothers and sisters we saw over in Israel, the Afro-Palestinians, in any U.S. country, you would never be able to tell the difference between us and them. Cause like even today, I know, I know, I know, Ham's features change, but sometimes I, I mean, Ham got a distinctive look. It's a, it's a crazy look, like nuts, like you know. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that those features were not inherited by the mother, because the father could be Jake. 
But I'm just saying, Ham be looking. These people that we saw over in Israel, <laughs> what? <laughs> Ham be looking nuts. These people that we saw over in Israel, it, I kid you, especially there was one brother that Bishop Nathaniel was talking to on the side. And I looked up and he looked. And he was, a, he looked like a big Judite. He was huge. Not like ridiculously huge, but he reminded me of like a, uh, he was like Deacon Abiel, Officer Irel, or Captain Rea. Big, he looked like Jude. I'm like, is this Deacon Abiel's uh, third cousin? Or Captain Rea's uh, 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 brother-in-law or something? I mean, it was, so it tells you that everywhere where those slaves were dispersed the area became darkened because what we began to populate and grow exceeding just like we did in egypt just like we did over here in america so on and so forth but it tells you that they were scattered or dispatched to those places because of slavery okay go ahead the crucially different gender ratios mm -hmm. two females to every male the, the difference between the trans sub-saharan slave trade and the transatlantic slave trade was that they took more females than they did men. I'm gonna say that again. And hold Joel three for me. The difference is when, because Christopher Columbus started the transatlantic slave trade. When they began to take slaves from there up to the so-called white Europeans in the 1600s, they took more men than women. The, the, the Arabs took more women than men. Go ahead. Two females to every male in the Islamic trade and two males to every female in the Atlantic one would support this argument. Mm -hmm. Certainly, female slaves in a domestic environment were far more the means of assimilation than were male slaves in the plantation environment. Because they said, you know what? It's easier to convert the women than it is the men. The men, it takes too much work. They got strong will, they got strong spirit. Nah, nah. This is why it shows you why Esau was number one because Esau is the direct tool for Esau, I mean, for Most High to whip us back into place. He says, listen, the Arabs are like, eh, I'm not really big on breaking these men these dudes are too big and, and, and strong and headstrong esau says no i want the men because i'm gonna break them down for generations to come i'm gonna destroy their families i'm gonna make them feel less than me i'm gonna make them worship me that's what esau esau said listen because they have to view me as god because what you don't know is the transatlantic slave trade not only fulfills the prophecy of who we are, but it also fulfills the prophecy of us believing that Esau is God. That has to happen. It has to be a certain destruction of the mind for you to say, okay, I know God created the trees, the birds, the heavens and the earth, but now I'm going to look at this man standing in front of me as God. Damn. So Esau says, you know what? I can break them down. If you give me that in Isaiah 14. Let's see. I want you to understand what the scriptures are saying. Give me verse. Uh, let me look at it. 12. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, mm -hmm. son of the morning? Mm -hmm. How art thou cut down to the ground? Which didst weaken the nations. He did what? Weakest weaken the nations. So now, when you read up throughout the scripture, when you jump to verse 16, it tells you it's not talking about actual Lucifer. Isaiah is prophesying and attaches that name to a nation of people. Actually, jump up to verse 16. Verse 16. They that see see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying after his destruction. Is this the man? I thought it was Lucifer. I thought it was a, a dude with a, a red dude with a little tail and a pitchfork. Go ahead. Is this the man uh -huh. that made the earth to tremble? Uh -huh. That did it shake kingdoms? So now there's a man who has, in his power, has taken over all kingdoms some way, shape, or form, meaning that they're under him. They fear him. Even though China has as much military might, if not more, than America, they still are in subject to the so-called white man. That 
it baffles me. If if you got a gun and I got or you got a gun and some homeboys, I got a gun and some homeboys. So in, in the streets that we come from, we see brothers and sisters fight for that power. But it's something in the spirit of these other nations that fall in subjection to this person who the Bible is calling Lucifer's power. They say, you know what? We're not even going to mess with him. Why? Because the Lord put that in their spirit. They're not going to do that against, at well, least not to the appointed time. They're going to sit back and the point of destruction, when most high destroy them, they're going to say, is this the man that we were in subjection to? Look, look how easily he fell. He fell in one hour. Is this the man? But go back down to verse 12. Verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, mm -hmm. son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nation? Which did weaken the nation. Go ahead. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. False prophets. <laughs> oh. Go ahead. I will exalt my throne above the stars. He's going to do what? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Uh -huh. I will sit upon also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Mm -hmm. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Mm -hmm. I will be like the most high. He will do what? I will be like the most high. So this man says, I'm going to, with all my technology, go ascending above the stars, going into space travel, above the clouds, going into, into airplanes and flight and so on and so forth. Because of these things that I'm able to do by the hand of his daddy, the serpent, the devil himself, he says, you know what? I'm going to be just like the most high. So it, what, in showing you that there's a certain level of destruction of the mind that has to happen, that now because of technology, you now revere him as God. We didn't make that up. Go ahead. Yet thou shalt be brought down to what's, hell. What's going to happen? Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. So he's going to be brought down. With each of the, the, the when, when he started to do these things, like in 1903 with the air and all of that stuff going into the planes and whatever, at that point, he was going to start to become weaker and weaker and brought down despite his technological advances. So, where well, I had you reading again? Judith. No, I had you, you, you oh, reading sorry. the book, weren't you? Yes, sir. Okay, read that again. Um, further, the high rate of manumission in Islam. And the absence of institutionalized racism mm -hmm. made social assimilation so much the easier. So now, it wasn't the racism, wasn't, um, I, get, I don't want to say as bad as here, is because everyone fell in line a lot easier then than now. Because what happened is as they assimilated the women, the women would calm down the bucks. You see that? The difference with Esau, Esau broke the bucks. That was, he had to break them down because he wanted to destroy that family structure. Go ahead. And even if the volumes of the two trades were roughly the same, mm -hmm. the Atlantic trade involved only four centuries, while the Islamic one stretched well beyond that. So it says the, is the, the transatlantic uh, slave trade was about four centuries, about 400 years. But the trans-sub-Saharan was way beyond that. Why? Because it's still going on today. It started way before the transatlantic, and it's still going on today. Go ahead. Manumission and social assimilation were not only more acceptable and widespread in Islam mm -hmm. for doctrinal reasons, but arguably also for the gradual character of the process. Okay. There were two final factors. Lewis has cited the high proportion of eunuchs among black slaves. Now, a eunuch has to deal with castration. There's two forms. When they take the scrotum or they take the entire package, the bat and the balls. No baseball going on. Nothing. You all right? <laughs> so it says there was a high number of what? Eunuchs. Now, there are some who eunuchs, there's eunuchs that are born that way, and there are those who were made eunuchs. Now, that's the same exact thing Esau was doing here about castrating the men. It's the exact same thing. 
they were they what it was remember they had a higher volume of female slaves so they said listen we're going to take these bucks and we're going to cut their rods off because they're not going to be laying with our um our concubines listen for, don't think because he owns the local gas station that he's not the devil don't think because he owns uh uh, uh what else they own uh there's something else too uh the halal you know there's a lot of halal spots in new york the halal spot that he's not the devil and they bought a lot of the bodegas and all of that from papito don't think they're not the devil okay these are the things that they did to your forefathers and a lot of us are in islam because that slave master has a stronger hold on us go ahead the high proportion of eunuchs among black slaves entering the Islamic lands and the high death rate and low birth rate among black slaves in North Africa and the Middle East. So now there was a it was a high uh, birth rate because they cut their rods off. High death rate and low birth rate. Hey, let me let me uh, let me have that real quick. I want to show you something. Go to page 134 real quick. Real quick. We'll get a little bit more out of here. Um, that paragraph and that one. Then we're going to move back to the scripts. At the end of this July month, three, right? yeah. August 1819, a August, large... August what? 1819. So in the 1800s, this stuff was still going on. Yes, sir. A large kafla caravan of Arabs, Tripolines, and Tibu arrived from Bornu, bringing with them 1,400 slaves of both sexes and of all ages, the greater part being females. Mm -hmm. The greater part being what? Females. Because females would take more, more females were taken than men. Go ahead. Several smaller parties had preceded them, many of whom also brought slaves. We rode out to meet the great Kafle and to see them into the town. So they saw the caravan that was coming in. They went, they went and met them. Go ahead. It was indeed a piteous spectacle. Mm -hmm. These poor it says, it says it was a it, this what I saw was worthy to be to pity. He says, listen, he said, I got them as slaves too, but I felt bad for them. Go ahead. These poor oppressed beings were many of them so exhausted. Also to be scarcely able to walk. Because remember, a lot of when when of course to go when they when they caravaned sometimes, especially when they came from um the western part of Africa, they did sail up to Mecca. Okay, it was a slave port. But oftentimes when they went and got slaves, like in the northern part of Africa, they walked. They walked. In the in the other book, um, in this book here, it's just I had it for a minute, so it's falling apart. I'm not even gonna go into it. The Black Holocaust for Beginners. It tells you sometimes they had to walk 500 miles while the slave captors, and it tells you, I think in here too, that they rode on camels. But this book tells you how far they walked. And it's good. so when you read the results of how they looked, it's showing you how far they had to walk. OK, and they had the yokes of iron. They had the trees together with the iron chains and they would carry these big logs. And I think it tells you here, too. But go ahead. Read. Many of them so exhausted as to be scarcely able to walk, their legs and feet were much swelled. You see that? Why? Because they walk great distances. No shoes, no comforts. No, nah, you wasn't. You're not getting any of that. OK, so it says they walked very far. They walked very far to the point where their feet were swollen. Their legs and ankles were swollen because guess what? The slave captors are comfortable on top of horses and camels. They chilling. Go ahead. And by their enormous size formed a striking contrast with their emaciated body. So wait a minute. So their bodies look starved, ribs touching. But when you look at their feet, they would look like elephant feet. I want you listen. 
Some of y'all want to worship that, that so-called uh, uh, God that they got. You are a fool. You are a fool because you have no idea what your forefathers went through to have that God forced on them. Allah is no God of our people. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you get offended. I don't care. He is an idol created by a, 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 a power stricken camel herder named Muhammad. OK, go ahead. They were all born down with loads of firewood. So they were born down with loads of firewood because not only did they have the iron upon their necks, they were they were they were. Uh, matter of fact, I think there's a picture in here, too. Give me one second. Now. I get these pages together. Is it this book? Might not be this one. Go ahead. I'm telling you, I'm missing some pages, man. This is a lot on this. They were all born down with loads of firewood. Uh -huh. And even poor little children worn to skeletons by fatigue and hardships. Did the children were what? Worn to skeletons by fatigue and hardships. Dang were obliged to bear their burden. So they were, they had to bear their burden as well. They had to carry the the, 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 the the loads of things. They had to have the the heavy wood upon their necks. They had to bear that burden too. The scripture tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that it will be a nation of fierce countenance. All these nations that come upon us are nations of fierce countenance. And Deuteronomy 28 has happened multiple times. Okay, go ahead. While many of their inhuman masters Rode on camels. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got, we got, we got to let that marinate. Many of their what? What's wrong with this brother? Many of their what? Inhuman masters rode on camels. So the masters rode on camels while brothers, sisters, and their children walked for hundreds of miles. Their bodies are um are skeleton like. Their bot. He looked at you like, yeah. <laughs> he looks at you like, yeah. I kill flies, b. See this brother? <laughs> their bodies were like skeletons, and their feet were the size of elephant feet. Go ahead. With the dreaded whip suspended. With the, what? the dreaded whip. Wait. So we got whipped here by Esau, and we were getting whipped by. The Wait a minute. Hold on. Did you read that right? With the dreaded whip uh -huh. suspended from their wrist. He says the whip that they had, they made sure they kept it to their wrist. They had to whip from on top of the camels and on top of the horses to whip everybody as they walked to keep them in line. Go ahead. With which they from time to time enforced obedient from these wretched captives. Mm. Care was taken, however, that the hair of the females should be arranged in nice order. It says, so wait a minute. So when they go into these lands, it says the females had to have their hair did. Their hair had to look nice. Their hair had to be a certain way. Go ahead. And that their body should be well oiled. And their body should be what? Well oiled. They need to, they need to have a certain look about them when they go into these places. Why? Because the Arab men wanted the women. Go ahead. Whilst the males were closely shaven. The the males were what? Closely shaven. Well, Y'all thought that that only began with Esau. That's what they think. No. They knew that this is a manly badge of dignity. And they say, you know what? We're going to treat you as boys as well. So the men had to shave off their beard, meaning to be kept in sin. They had to, they were given another God. I hope you understand this. Go ahead. To give them a good appearance on entering the town. Mm -hmm. That was it? That's it. A good appearance upon entering the town. They can't see how afflicted you are. But this brother, this guy walked up. He was like, yo, these people look nuts. Give me that. Joel 3. Joel chapter 3. You want verse 3? Um, look at it. 3 and yes. Joel chapter 3 verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people mm -hmm. and have given a boy for an harlot. And sold a girl for wine. So now, no, go up to, oh, keep reading. That they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyree mm -hmm. and Zidon mm -hmm. and all the coast of Palestine? So now, so you, O Tyree and Zidon and all the coast of Palestine, so called, so called 
uh, Hamites, Canaanites, and the sons of Ishmael. So read verse 3 again. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot mm -hmm. and sold a girl for wine. And sold a girl for what? For wine mm -hmm. that they might drink. So we, we read about why it was so many females in the trans-Sub-Saharan slave trade. Why is that? Because they have to fulfill this prophecy. Huh. Page 161. Page 161. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the early 1880s, in the same book, Islam's Black Slaves, go ahead, Arab or Afro-Arab raiders were operating from the western shore of Lake Nyasa mm -hmm. and extensively in the region of the upper Zambezi, mm -hmm. capturing young girls Do and what? capturing young girls in the vicinity of Blantyre. Read that again. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot. Mm -hmm. And so, so turn the boys into breeders and sold a girl for wine. So now the girls were captured because the girl was their commodity to gain wine, to gain wealth, so on and so forth. They were selling off the girls. Listen, and then we say, oh, oh, that's that's I, I want to worship their God. I want to be with them. Why? Because they have a stronger hold on you. That's what they have. <clears throat> Let's go down. Let's go to Jeremiah 3 and 2. Jer do Jeremiah 2 and 11. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11. Hath a nation changed their gods? which are yet no gods. So now the nations, they don't have a God, whether you like it or not. They don't have any God. That's why we read earlier why they hate God's people, because we're chosen of God. They hate that. They hate that. Go ahead. But my people have changed their glory for that which doeth not profit. She says my people have changed their glory. I, I, I gave myself to them. And they said, nah, I don't want you. I want a golden calf. I want a stone in Mecca. I want a, a, a fat Chinese guy in, in, in Beijing. Go ahead. That was it? Yes, sir. Read it again. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Hath the nation changed their gods, mm -hmm. which are yet no gods? Mm -hmm. But my people have changed their glory for that which doeth not profit. So which is that to do with that which does not profit them. Why? Because we read early in Exodus chapter 20 that we're not to have any gods before the Most High. Jump over to chapter 3, verse 2. Chapter 3 and verse 2. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places mm -hmm. and see where thou hast not been lying with. Mm -hmm. In the ways hast thou, hast thou sat for them as the Arabians in the wilderness. Sat for what? Sat for the ones that you call gods but they're not gods hey give me uh, chapter 2 verse 27 jeremiah chapter 2 verse 27 saying to a stock thou art my father a stock is an inanimate object like a like a tree stump and to a stone thou has brought me forth so now we revere a stone as god so read what you got three and two Lift up thine eyes unto the high places mm -hmm. and see where thou hast not been lying with. Mm -hmm. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabians in the wilderness. So you, we sat for them as the Arabians in the wilderness. That's what we did. We made, Meaning we saw how the Arabians were worshiping their God and we said, you know what? We should do it just like them. We, uh, we saw uh, 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 Elijah Muhammad put on a daggone zoot suit and fo who followed Fahard Muhammad, or they call him Master Fahard, who was an Edomite. And they said, you know what? This is the great understanding. We can all talk like this. Listen, and, and, and you know what's so crazy? It's funny because at the time in the 60s with Malcolm X, I could understand to a degree why brothers would cleave unto the nation of Islam? Because there wasn't much order among our people at the time. There wasn't much understanding out there. There wasn't much uh, 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 wisdom out there. 
So what they saw was all they really saw was the unity of brothers and sisters. Sisters were in order. Brothers were in order. That was the alluring factor. It wasn't really what the Quran said. Because the Quran ain't saying nothing. Let's be honest. It's not saying anything. Oh, but you know what? Let's see what the Quran does say. Hold on. We're going to come back here. Let's, let's, I can't because I almost forgot that. But, so here's the actual Quran. This is the Quran now. Okay? Go to that second surah. Was it 2 and 40 or 3 and 40? Second Surah, 2 and 40. Mm -hmm. O children of Israel, call to mind the special favor which I bestowed upon you and fulfill then your promise to me as I fulfill my promise to you and fear none but me. Mm -mm. Hold on. This is the Quran. I'm gonna, we're going to read that again. O children of Israel, mm -hmm. call to mind this special favor which I bestowed upon you mm -hmm. and fulfill then your promise to me as I fulfill my promise to you and fear none but me. Um, I'm sorry. When did the children of Israel, and you know what? I, I take that back. I say, when did the children of Israel make a promise unto so-called muhammad or allah but we did not not as a as a general populace but for those of us who went into slavery and those of us who started to worship our slave masters god okay give me the other one just give me another one because it's all throughout the quran i want some more Say this is second sword three. Nah, I don't want that. One. I want this. <laughs> okay. Second sword. I mean, sword three and fifty. Go ahead. And I have come to you confirming Torah. Confirming what? Torah, which is which is the first five books of Moses, which was before me. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. So in the Quran. Muhammad tells you that he was reading the Torah. I'm, I'm confused. Why is another religion reading my history book? And he's actually, he actually, he actually told on himself because the Quran means to recite. He's telling you where he's reciting his whole ideology from. Now you wonder why Muslims don't eat pork. Why Muslim, why especially Sunnis, Muslims have beards. Why do their women dress in uh, dress modestly? Hold on. Because hold on. When when Rebecca saw Isaac, what did she do? She she put on a veil. She put on a what? She put on a veil. Where did Muhammad get that from? The Bible. He got it from the Bible. He's reciting. The Bible. No, read that one. We're going to get that too. I, I want it all, brother. <laughs> Finish that one out. And I have come to you confirming Torah, which was before me, and to make lawful to you part of what was before forbidden to you. And I have come to you with proof from your Lord. So fear Allah and obey me. He says fear Allah, but he said he's reading the Torah. No daggone Allah in the Torah. Go ahead. Well, you know what? Go to, let's go to the Torah. We're going to go to Deuteronomy 12 and 2. Let's get some Torah on it. And we're going to come back to the Quran. Let's get some Torah on it. Put some Torah on it. You know I say? Put some stank on it. Put some, put, put some Torah on it. <laughs> Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 2. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains. Read that again. 
Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess served their gods. So now, it baffles me that Muhammad is writing about him being in the Torah or studying the Torah, but then writing about another God. Because in the Torah, it tells you to destroy other gods. But guess what? I can't blame him. Listen, if I wanted to be in the, if, if I wasn't, if I wasn't a, a, a Israelite, I would be envious of the Israelites as well. I would be. I'm like, man, most high chose them. Daggone, I missed the bus. So I'm not upset that, uh, 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 you know, Muhammad started another religion. He re is reading the Torah and says, now he said he prays homage to another God when the by, when the Torah tells you to destroy the other the gods of the other nations, was that verse read verse three as well? And no, keep reading. It's upon not. the high mountains mm -hmm. and upon the hills mm -hmm. and under every green tree, mm -hmm. and ye shall overthrow their altars. And do what? And ye shall overthrow their altars. So all of you so-called Muslims should overthrow that Kaaba stone. You brothers, you sisters, stop making hodges or going over there to worship that garbage. Because that's what it is. It's garbage. It's garbage. It's a stone that they built this big shrine around. And hundreds of thousands of people go there. They sit around it. They, they, um, they, they bow down to it. That's idolatry, man. Go ahead. And break their pillars. And do what? And break their pillars. So that encasing is a big pillar right go ahead and burn their groves and burn their groves with fire and ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods so the torah that muhammad read said they should hew down those graven images of their gods so why is that shrine still standing because last time I checked, it also tells you you have to believe the writings of Moses. Yes. Do you, do you have that? We, well, let's get that. Let's let's show you that these other nations, they're the devil. That's it. They're the devil. They're the devil. So we have to come out of that thing and start serving the one true God. Read what you was gonna read first. Okay. See, we don't know how to we. <laughs> you know, this, 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 cause it's not even all book, the daggone devil Quran, but we're going to read out of their book so that our brothers and sisters, Lord's will, if you're in that, that, uh, that Islamic garbage, you'll come out of it. Go ahead. So chapter five, verse 65, mm -hmm. if the people of the book had only believed and been righteous, we should have indeed have removed their sin and admitted them to gardens of happiness. Mm -hmm. If they had only truthfully followed the Torah and the gospel. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Let me see. Let me show them what book we're reading again. This is the Quran. So it baffles me how a brother can read this. And when it says so much about another people, but now. You don't you don't go and research who those other people are. It doesn't make you want to say why is the why is the why is the Quran telling me that the Lord actually has special favor or has chosen another people that I can't identify with. You know what? Let me go look into who those people are. Who are the children of Israel are today? Read that again. If they had only truthfully followed the Torah mm -hmm. and the gospel and all the revelation that was sent to them from their Lord, they would have enjoyed happiness and said, wait, 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 he said, listen, if they had only kept the commandments, they wouldn't be slaves today. Right. Damn. So you're telling me the other nations, the, the, the Arabs who enslaved you know that about you. This, didn't we read that in, in Judith five? Oh, we didn't finish. We didn't finish it. Go ahead, Asa. We read, read Judith 5 real quick. Uh, so showing you it's not just oh, yeah. the... We're going to finish that. Okay. 
Yeah, we don't. I know you guys. I know you got something for me. Judah five. Uh, Judah chapter five and verse twenty. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, my lord and governor, mm -hmm. if there be any error in this people, if there be any sin in this people, they and they sin against their God. Uh -huh. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. It says. Let, let you know that they're going to be slaves. We can overtake them. We can rule over them. We can trod them down as long as we're in sin. So this is the Ammonites. These are the Japanese. But we're reading that the Ishmaelites know the same thing as well out of their own book. My Lord. Read that again. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor. If there be any error in this people mm -hmm. and they sin against their God, mm -hmm. let us consider that this shall be their ruin mm -hmm. and let us go up and we shall overcome them. See that they know that they know they can overcome us if we sin against our God. Now, read, read what the uh, what the Ishmaelites are saying now. 568 say, O people of the book, you have no ground to stand on. Unless you truly stand by no, the no, you Torah. Didn't, no, you didn't. Oh, truly stand by the Torah. Go ahead. The gospel and all of the message that has come to you from your Lord. Mm. It is the same message that comes to you from your Lord that increases in most of them their long lasting revolt and lies mm. meant against Allah. But you do not feel sorry for these people without faith. Without what? Faith. What, what part you read? You read? Right here. This, this, this. Go ahead. Oh, people of the book. Oh, people of what? The book. What book is he talking about? The Torah. Go ahead. You have no ground to stand on mm -hmm. unless you truly stand by the Torah. The God says, unless you truly stand by the Torah. Genesis 35 and 2. Because we just read, you got to cut down their images, so on and so forth. So, um, Muhammad says, you have no ground to stand on unless you truly observe the Torah. So the Quran is telling you to read another book, which is the Bible. But the Bible never tells you to read the Quran. I'm confused. And hold that. Give me, um, I want Isaiah 34 and 16 as well. Go ahead. Read. Genesis chapter 35 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you See and that? be clean. It says, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean. But guess where we got those strange gods from? For being enslaved by the Arabians for so long. For so long. Nehemiah 2.19. Uh, you could drop that. Okay. Nehemiah 2.19. For time's sake, I, I can't go into it. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 19. But when Sambalot, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian, heard it. Wait, wait, wait. The, the what? The Arabian. So when the Arabians heard it, the Arabs, go ahead. They laughed us to scorn and despised us. Wait, 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 wait. They what? Left us to scorn and despised us. Those Arabians hate you. That's something that Malcolm X realized once he went over to Mecca. He was like, initially he was trying to cover it up, but he, you know, he couldn't. He it couldn't stay in his spirit. He was like, listen, I, I can't do this. This whole uh, that's because when he came back, he changed. He's like, I can't do this whole Islam thing, and it was like, nah, because he was such a rallier and so compelling to the people. That they followed him. That's why they killed him. Because when he came back from Mecca, he was like, yo, it's not what I thought it was. Because he thought, he knew he was a nigga over here. He went over there and realized he was a, a, a sand nigga. <laughs> over there. But I got you, Holman. Page what? Page 259. Okay. In the in the Columbia history of the world, page 259. Let me see something. Um, Read this and this. It says the strong monotheism, the theory of revelation, and the biblical element in Quran all suggest it that it all comes to this conclusion that Muhammad 
was exposed to both Christian and Jewish influences. Now, Rudolf R. Windsor wrote that in Babylon to Timbuktu, right here. He wrote it here. And you have all of these so-called white theologians, all of these and black theologians who try to discredit what the brother said. That Muhammad learned from Israelites. But we have scholars at Columbia University who just said the same thing. I'm, now I'm, I'm confused again. So you discredit because it's a brother who's an author. So you're going to discredit this too. Read that again. The strong, the strong monotheism, meaning one God, because prior to Islam, the Arabs had many gods, just like the so-called, um, not so-called, so-called Africans, the Hamites, the Canaanites. They had many gods. Monotheism was only introduced through the Israelites, who were also called the Christians, who are also who they're referring to as Jewish. The Israelites. Go ahead. The theory of revelation and the biblical element in the Quran all suggest mm -hmm. that Muhammad was exposed to both Christian and Jewish influence. Mm -hmm. However, his versions of biblical stories indi in indicate that they were indirectly acquired, most likely from Jewish and Christian traders and travelers. Whose it says the way he you can tell by the way he wrote the Quran. He got his style of writing, his his methodology, his monotheism from somewhere. It was the Israelite traders who would go in and out of Arabia, in and out of these different uh, uh, Arabic lands. And he would and Rudolf Windsor goes in deep on how he used to um, he used to always want to be in the midst of them. He tried to convert some of the Israelites over to to um, to Islam and they wouldn't convert. So. At that point, they became hit. Um, the Israelites became his enemies because they would not follow his God. But the Columbia University is saying the same thing. Go ahead. Whose religious knowledge was sketchy and, apoc and apocryphal. Mm -hmm. That he was influenced by the Hanif's native holy men dissatisfied with uh, Arabian paganism they were dissatisfied with arabian paganism go ahead it's also possible jump down what is clear is that he was disturbed and disgusted by the idolatry of his contemporaries mm -hmm. and their lack of devotion to allah the true god mm -hmm. he was painfully aware that the disciple uh disciplined religious life of the jews and christians wait the disciplined life of who? Of the Jews and Christians. Because we were called Christians first in Antioch. So he's referring to the Israelites. Jews are referring to the Israelites. He said they're, they're what? What kind of life? That the disciplined religious life of the Jews and Christians. Hmm. And where did he learn about that disciplined life? from the Torah, because we had laws we had to follow. He tried to have Israelites convert. Israelites were like, hell no. We ain't worshiping your false God. And he says, damn, they're disciplined. Guess what? I'm going to coin something that's very similar to their discipline, but it's not quite it. I'm just gonna recite it. You know what's a good name for the book? The Quran, which means to recite. Go ahead about him contrasted sharply with the materialistic paganism of his comp compatriots. So now he has materialistic paganism of his compatriots. I don't think we even need to really go on, man. I think it's just in class right there. Um, Hold on one second, y'all. In that book, page 133. You, oh, you read that already. Yeah, you read that already. 
No, but you know what? There's a part, let me see, 134, where it says, um, oh, down here. Um, you can read up to that part. From the top? Yeah, read from the top. Page 134 in Islam, Islam's Black Slaves. Lyon was indignantly aware of how far the slaving activities that served the Libyan trade were conducted in breach of Islamic law. So now, we just read that the way of the Jews and the Christian was very strict. And the, the Arabians, they was like, nah, we want something more free. But it used to frustrate Muhammad how they wanted to stay in paganism. So now we're reading about this, the way they enslaved us was in direct contrast to Islamic law. Go ahead. It is expressly said that Muslims may take or destroy all those who do not believe in Islamism. So now it says their way is supposed to be for all those that 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 uh that believe in Islamism or don't believe in Islamism, that's who they can murder. They can kill them. They're called infidels. Go ahead. But that they should first endeavor to instruct and on their refusing so to it says their first order of business, according to Islamic law, is to instruct those people who don't believe in Islam, meaning teach them. But if they don't want to be taught, then make them slaves. Make them what? Slaves. Go ahead. The same law distinctively teaches, I'm sorry, the same law distinctly teaches that those who are already Muslims cannot be taken captive or sold. So now, where did he get that from? Leviticus 25. Where we no, we're not gonna go there. We know how to deal with um with our with our servants, whether of our nation and the servants of other nations. That's where he got that from. But go ahead. Nothing, however, is further from the idea of a Mohammedan than to instruct because it was before it was called Islam, it was called Mohammedan. So those that worshipped it were called Mohammedans. Go ahead. Then to instruct the Negroes. Wait, wait, wait. read that again. Nothing, however, is further from the idea of a Mohammedan. The nothing is further because it says you can't in, you can't enslave um, those who believe in Allah. That's what it just said. The line above, right? You can't enslave those if they believe in, in in that God. You can't enslave them. But what did? How do the Arabs feel about the Negroes? Read that again. Nothing, however, is further from the idea of a Mohammedan. Nothing is further from that idea that you can't enslave so-called Muslims. Go ahead. Then and to instruct the Negroes. He says, listen, they were not trying to teach the Negroes nothing. They just put the Negroes in chains. That's it. So you got your God because they put you in chains. They was, listen, you willfully now become Muslims, but the history tells you that they weren't trying to teach you anything. They really weren't trying to make you Muslims. They didn't want you following Islam. It says nothing was further from the truth. It says, listen, don't enslave other is other Muslims. No, don't do that. But if you find some Negroes who are Muslims, put they behind in slavery. You see that? Now today you walk around a little bow tie on and a zoot suit. Talking about you selling a selling a final call. A call to what? What are you calling for? Huh? What are you calling for? Ain't nobody answering that thing. Now, while the Israelites is out here, we're going to cast down every daggone lie in this earth, man. That's right. Every lie in this earth. And our people got to come up out of that thing. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other, mm -hmm. and there thou shalt serve other gods. You shall what? Thou shalt serve other gods, mm -hmm. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. So today, we still we still are serving wood and stone. We're serving the, the Kaaba stone, and we're serving that wooden cross. Okay? Neither of which did the Lord tell us to worship. So that we're still under these curses. We're born under these curses, man. But we got to get our minds right. 
We have to get our minds right because we have to get out of that idolatrous way. Psalms 96 and 5. Psalms chapter 96, verse 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols. What is it? Are idols. All the gods of the nations are idols. Real quick, go to um, Bell and the Dragon. Real quick. I'll look at it in a minute. Give me a second. Go to uh, verse one. Bell and the Dragon, verse one. And King Astigus mm -hmm. with that's was a, that's actually Darius, but go ahead. Was gathered to his fathers, and Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom, and Daniel conversed with the king, and was honored above all his friends. Now the Babylonians had an idol called Bell. What was this? What was this? Now the Babylonians had an idol. Had called, an idol called Bell. Go ahead. Called Bell, and there was there were spent upon him every day twelve great measures of fine flour, and forty sheep and six vessels of wine. And the king worshipped it and went daily to adore it. But Daniel worshipped his own god. What did Daniel do? But Daniel worshipped his own God. So there are people making a hajj over to Mecca to worship the Kaaba stone. What are we supposed to do? Worship his own God. We're supposed to worship our own God. Go ahead. And the king said unto him, Why dost thou, why dost thou not, not thou worship Baal? Who answered and said, Because what I made... Verse 5. Go ahead. Who answered and said, because I may not worship idols made with hands. Wait a minute. So the Kaaba stone was a, a damn meteorite stone that hit, which happens all the time. They took it, placed it into an encasement, to a silver encasement first. Then that's into a large marble encasing. Stories high. What did Daniel say? Who answered and said, because I may not worship idols with hands, mm -hmm. but the living God mm -hmm. who has created the heaven and the earth mm -hmm. and had sovereignty over all flesh. Mm -hmm. Then said the king unto him, thinkest thou not that Baal is a living God? Do you, you don't think that the Kaaba is a living God, is Allah, whatever? Hell no. Nah. Go to the part where it said that Daniel um, mocked him. Where is it? Um, verse 19. <laughs> Verse 19, then laughed Daniel. What did he do? Then laughed Daniel. Daniel mocked him. How you going to have, how you, listen, there's only one God. I'm not worshiping anybody. Same thing happened in the book of Daniel with Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, so on and so on. Or Hananiah, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Thank you. It was like, we're not worshiping your bowing down and worshiping your God. Nah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. That's the same thing we need to do, okay? When these nations uh, are try to force it upon us, we're not going to do that. We're not going to worship it for, for, what, for no reason at all, okay? No, I'm not going to be a part of it. Listen, y'all having a, a what party, a Christmas party? It's mandatory for me to go? Well, I can't go. I'm not going. I'm not going. A lot of times we're, we're afraid to take a stand for most high God. And then we wonder why he's not fighting for us. We're not fighting for him. We're not fighting for his, for him to be the one true God in the earth. Mm -mm. We don't stand for him, but we, 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 we expect him to stand for us. So read that again. We're going to end it on that one. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Then laughed Daniel mm -hmm. and held the king that he should not go in and said, behold, now the pavement and mark well whose footsteps are these. Because the, the, he, the king said that Daniel, that Bell was consuming all this food. And Daniel said, it's not Bell. Bell has no eyes, can't see, has no uh, uh, mouth to speak, so on. But that Bell is not a god. It's somebody else eating the food. So he sprinkled some sand on the floor. They sealed the door. And it was a secret compartment that the priests were coming in and his families and eating the food. And Daniel told him, look, look. Look at the footprints. That's not Bell's footprints. Those are people's footprints. So 
Daniel was wise enough to know that these are no other gods. We need to wisen up the same way and stop worshiping these other gods, okay? Because these are the gods of your slave masters. All right, so I pray class was edifying. I pray brothers and sisters learn something. Um, time for questions, so to speak. Got to head out, but um, right, the cob is not for us, man. Listen, most high going to destroy all of these idols, every last one of them, every last one of them. Okay. But all right, Israel. I pray all is well. I pray class was edifying. I pray you brothers and sisters uh, remain strong in the Lord. We can cast down all of these lies, man. All of these lies. All right, Israel. So with that, we say shalom. Most high Christ bless. Shalom.